he and his coasties are doing to save lives. I'm grateful. For, told him how proud of him I was and thanked him for all the work he and his coasties are doing to save lives. I'm grateful for the brave women and men, federal, state, and local folks working so hard. They're all working as one team. Hear that from the governor as well as from the federal folks. President Biden personally calling first responders, including members of the Coast Guard, who risked their lives to rescue others from the devastation of Hurricane Ian. Ironically, one of those heroes, technician second class Zach Lash, says he will lose his job by the end of the year thanks to the president's own vaccine mandate. Florida Congressman Michael Waltz is a former Green Beret commander and member of the House Armed Services Committee, and he joins us now. Congressman, if you can believe it, the man that the president called to thank for his heroic actions is going to be fired at the end of the year because of the president's own policies. What do you make of this? Yeah, the, he's one of uh, 2,600 Nash, uh, excuse me, Coasties that uh, that are in this position. And I can tell you what the disabled woman in a wheelchair that he strapped to himself uh, and extracted, uh, it saved her life. She didn't care that he hadn't received a vaccine. We have over a thousand National Guards, men and women in the Florida National Guard that are also in the same position on the verge of getting kicked out of the guard uh, with with no pay and benefits, losing their retirement. They're out there on the front lines right now. And, and the people that they're giving water, food, uh, protecting from looting and crime, they don't care. Uh, the Floridians that are out there, they're saving, they don't care. But yet the Pentagon is sticking to this stubborn, asinine policy that is not following the data and the science. Look, the CDC has changed the guidelines. It is clear the vaccine doesn't stop the spread. Uh, you know, one could argue it made sense when we thought that it did, but it no longer does. This is an extremely healthy population. So the argument that it's going to affect readiness just doesn't hold water. Look, and at the end of the day, on top of it all, guys, we have a major recruiting crisis. We are falling short, particularly in the Army, by thousands and thousands of men and women that they can't bring in to replace these people. They're on the verge of kicking out. They have got to stop this mandate. It doesn't make any sense, and it's hurting people. The point that you made is the exact same one yeah, that did. Mr. Lash made. Quote, if I had asked any of the people I saved yesterday, if they wanted to come with me, even though I am unvaccinated, every single one of them would have said yes. He thanked me, yet the vaccine mandate is what's kicking me out. I just love my job and I'm really good at it. I feel like this is the job that I was born to do. Do you think any of this public pressure will force any of these Washington bureaucrats to say, you know, we need to change this up now? Or at this point, is this all about saving face? Yeah, there's just this stubborn ideology uh, that, that just doesn't make any sense. Look, I get it. You know, I'm, I'm a colonel uh, in, in the military and as a Green Beret and a National Guardsman, I get it. You, you give a platoon an order to take the hill, they have to follow that order for good military and discipline. But as a leader, and this is what I'm asking of the Pentagon leadership, you also have to reevaluate your orders. You have to change your orders when the situation changes. And it, you know, if you had someone getting into a submarine or getting into a tank that you thought were going to infect others, that's one thing. But since the vaccine now doesn't stop the spread, it's a personal health decision. The CDC agrees, let's reevaluate this order. But I can tell you what, uh, if we flip the house, I hope to be the chairman of the Military Readiness Committee. And if the Pentagon won't change, we're gonna legislate it and force them to change. We have to take care of these people who have been out on the front lines all during the pandemic, many of whom, by the way, have natural immunity because they already got the virus and the Pentagon's not taking that into account either. Uh, it, it, it just makes no sense uh, to hurt these folks. And we're talking big numbers, guys. You know, 15,000 just in the Army alone, on top of the 15,000 that they fell short. That's, uh, from a recruiting standpoint, that's three divisions worth of soldiers 
And oh, by the way, we have the Russians threatening nuclear war and we have a massive major Chinese buildup. Yeah. Uh, we, common sense has got to reign here. Yeah, there's also this uh, latest YouGov CBS News poll. It shows that 68% of people believe that rights and freedoms are at stake in the midterm elections. And a lot of people view that as how people uh, see the overturning of Roe versus Wade. But that could also mean how people view pandemic policies and lockdowns and everything that happened in 2020. Uh, 15 seconds to you, unfortunately, but do you still think that those things are on top of mind for the American people? Well, I think first and foremost, the economy's, uh, it, the economy crime border inflation are top of mind uh, for, for this midterm. But this freedom issue, you're, you're right, it goes both ways. And at the end of the day, when it comes to the military, the commander in chief himself, Joe Biden, right. said the pandemic's over. So let's adjust. Congressman Michael Waltz, thank you for joining us. As always, we appreciate it.